Hello, my dears. I'm really happy to be sharing one of my very favorite lessons with you all today. It's lesson number 76. I am under no laws but God's. This is one of those really in-your-face ones that you're going to want to pay a lot of attention to. <laughs> so, there are no laws but God's, and thank goodness. We have tried endlessly to find our happiness and our safety through people and places and things and all sorts of senseless undertakings. Have you noticed it hasn't worked out well? You might possibly temporarily have been happy doing something in the getting your way department, but it doesn't ever last. So you take a look around the world and you realize somehow looking for happiness and safety the way we've been doing it doesn't work. Now, we've made up lots and lots of crazy laws that have actually imprisoned us. I can't do this. I must do this. You have to do this. Life doesn't work if you don't do that. And on and on and on. We are not bound by these laws. Happiness is not going to be found by following the laws of the world. We've been looking in the wrong place. And as long as we're going to look in the wrong place and try to prove to ourselves that happiness can be found through any other means but love, we're just in big trouble. So thank goodness that it's impossible so that we can stop looking in the wrong place where it cannot possibly ever be found. It says salvation is very simple. You just look only where it's located. <laughs> We've said this before, and we often keep not doing it. Well, where it's located is within us and as us. Now, all of these strange laws that we've made about how we're going to be safe and happy and so on do not bind us. We don't have to pay any attention to them. So let's take a look to remind ourselves what some of these crazy laws are. It says, you actually think you would starve if you didn't have big stacks of little paper strips and some little round coins, that you cannot be well and you cannot stay alive without some little fluid pushed in your veins or some little pellets that you swallow. You can see how facetious it's trying to be. It says, you think you're always going to be lonely if there's not another body around. There's a place in the text where it says, if you think you're alone because there's not a body there, then you are insane. It doesn't mince words. <laughs> so it says, all of these ideas are insane. And all of these laws that we think we have to follow in the world are pretend laws. They're fake laws. They're rituals that don't have any purpose, and they don't accomplish anything. These crazy laws about medicine and economics and health, and it's going to tell us later on about all of our social laws and so on. It says these aren't laws, they're madness. And why are we so in love with these laws if they're madness? Okay, here's the reason. The body is hurt and endangered by the mind that hurts itself. Remember, the world is a mirror, and certainly the condition of the body is a mirror. So the body suffers so the mind can avoid seeing it's attacking itself. In other words, bodily suffering or the suffering of our circumstances, that's a big mask. It's a smokescreen. So the mind does not have to own the fact that it's its own enemy. It's us that's decided that we're guilty and unworthy and no good and life shouldn't work out for us. As long as we keep believing that and saying that, then the outer equivalent is going to happen. So I hope you can begin to see that all of our laws about how we have to keep the body safe, they're just a huge distraction. And then it keeps reminding us there are no laws except love. Our fake laws don't have any substance. They don't have any power. They don't have any ability to really cause anything to happen. There aren't any laws except love, the laws of love. And we need to repeat it over and over and over and over again. And that applies in every circumstance in this world. 
It says our magic has no meaning, no goal, no truth, no power, no substance. And what is magic? Magic is the belief that something in our world, which remember is only an effect, somehow magically now has causative properties, like germs make the body sick. Germs may appear to be an agent, but they don't make the body sick. Hating yourself makes the body sick. But since that's what we're trying to avoid, we blame it on germs, we blame it on nutrition, we blame it on everything imaginable out here in the world. Big smoke screen. So when the Course refers to magic, that's what it's talking about, the idea that something in this world, which is only a picture, can cause something else in the world. All cause is internal. Everything outside us, external, is the effect. So the net of this is that these fake laws that we're pretending like we're going to save us are really focused on saving the body, which isn't us. And our minds, which all these laws are meant to hide, are the only things that will save us. So the laws of love are the only laws there are, absolutely cannot be replaced or altered, thank goodness. So our magic imprisons us, but the laws of love allow us to be free. So the light has come and the laws of love operate, end of story. For our longer practice, we're asked to see, okay, first, what laws do we now obey? We obey the laws of nutrition and medicine and what will keep the body safe. All of our social laws, what you can do, what you can't do, how you're supposed to behave. All these laws of behaviors of different religions that say you can do this, you can't do this, you must do this. And notice how different these are in different cultures, in different centuries. So our laws are anything but immutable because they keep changing. Every time we turn around, even in a few centuries, a few decades in this country, the laws of what's okay and what isn't okay, what will be acceptable, what isn't, keep being thrown out the window and replaced. It says it should be clear to you by this time that these laws don't save you from anything or for anything, but they do enslave and they do damn and they are meaningless. So no laws but God's. Forget everything else. Now in this practice period, we're asked to listen. Listen to this. The laws of love ask for no payment of anyone else. There's no loss. There's no trading. There's no substituting. The laws of love are only about giving. They're not about getting or taking because we are designed as expressions of love. We were created by love outpouring itself as us, and that's how we are built to operate as well. You were asked in these practice periods to remind yourself, not only are our laws crazy and imprisoning, but listen in quiet to how much you are loved, how much joy is here for all of us, how much our Creator longs for us to pay attention to the truth in us. So let the outpouring which created us continue through us. So love and joy are always in our awareness. So remember, as often as you can today, I am under no laws but God's. I am under no laws except the ones that say, the more I give, the more I have. The safer, the more peaceful, the more healthy, the more friendly, the more everything wonderful I will be. None of the world's laws work. Only God's laws work to bring us peace, to bring us happiness, to bring us joy, to bring us safety. It's always here for us for the asking. So this is a pretty in-your-face lesson. But if I can keep remembering, this is how I'm going to be free. Take one step at a time. You'll really be glad you did. Have a really wonderful day. Bye.